Joan Wilder, the historian for Aleppo Shrine. I have an interesting piece uh, brought here today. Uh, this is something we um, were given recently uh, for our archives and museum. It's uh, some may call a trophy, but traditionally it was called a loving cup, two-handed loving cup. This was presented by uh, Karnak Shrine in uh, Montreal, uh, Canada to the Imperial Potentate, who's the head of all the Shriners internationally. Uh, the Imperial Potentate at the time was Clarence Dunbar, and it was presented on September 3rd, 1927. Now, <clears throat> why do we have this? Um, I think it's a great example piece of a practice that was common in the era. Back then, especially in the fraternal world, but in certain levels of polite society, it was common if you had a visiting dignitary to your lodge, to your organization, perhaps they were giving a speech or if they were just paying a, a visit, you would present them with a gift, oftentimes engraved, to commemorate the occasion. Now, the interesting, um, or rather exciting bit about this was when it was donated to us, we were told it was uh, silver plated when we got it, it was almost black with tarnish, so I took it upon myself to clean it up because uh, I'm of the opinion that if an item was meant to be shiny, it should be shiny. So I, uh, for those that argue about patina, but um, I cleaned it up and I was able to find uh, a hallmark on the back, so it is solid sterling silver. So uh, Karnak Temple, applause to you for not cheating out the Imperial Potentate by giving him a, uh, a cheap uh, loving cup. Now, in, uh, in the history of Aleppo, I have references, photos of items being presented by our temple to various imperial potentates who, um, who visited. I've seen a few of these items come up for sale over the years, either before I was involved in forming our archives or they're just way too expensive, so not something that we would be able to obtain. But uh, there were various Loving Cup trophies uh, I know one time was an entire silverware set. Uh, another one was a replica of one of the lanterns from the Old North Church. And one of my favorites, which I would love to get my hands on, uh, and I know it exists because I saw it come up for sale uh, on an online auction about five years ago. In 1949, the Imperial Potentate was the silent movie star Harold Lloyd. And he was uh, very close with one of our officers at the time. And when he came to visit, they presented him with an original Paul Revere spoon. Um, and that came up for auction a couple of years ago in the, uh, in the box with the engraved plate saying that it was from Aleppo Temple. So it just, it just goes to show some of the, um, one of the, some examples of a common practice of the time. So you'll see some of these, um, when you come across different items that are engraved, sometimes they are presented, you know, instead of being presented to the lodge or the shrine or the organization, they're presented to the individual. And sometimes it's just because of a visit. In this case, the Imperial Potentate, I was able to find the story of his wide travels in an early shrine magazine. Um, and this was just one of his many stops he visited the Shrine Hospital that had opened in Montreal, um, spent some time there. I guess he was a, a accomplished cornet player, so he entertained the, pe the patients playing music for them and was made an honorary member of the Boy Scouts of Canada from the Boy Scout troop that met uh, at the Shrine Hospital and was composed of Shrine patients. So there's an interesting story from his travels, but we're pleased to have this uh, artifact from his... Uh, from his time as Imperial Potentate and as an example of something that happened in the era. So if you like what you see, remember to like the video, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook. Thank you.